Hello, my name is Nat. I am a college student at Indiana University, and I am making this uh, video uh, for my intensive writing class uh, for my publicity assignment. And I'm making it about uh, Siapo, uh, which is a type of bark cloth made in Samoa. Now, uh, before I begin, I want to start with a disclaimer. That I apologize for any mispronunciations that I make in my video due to my inability to say certain syllables. Now, also, I have I will have all the credits and sources within a document in the description below. At the Eskenazi Museum of Art, which is located in Bloomington, Indiana, you'll find different pieces of history from throughout the world located in different sections within the museum. Um, they are differentiate they are divided between the times that they are from, the areas that they are, and what types of art they are. Now, I will be focusing on one specific piece, uh, which is in the Oceanic Collection, which is located on the third floor. Now, the piece of art that I chose is from Samoa. It is uh, bark cloth. It can either be one word or two words, uh, bark cloth or bark cloth. And then um, in Samoa, it's called Siapo, but in other parts of Polynesia, it is called Hatapa. Um, it, this specific piece is dated between 1930 to 1950 and was gifted for, by Mrs. Edward J. Kemp. The artist of this is unknown, unfortunately, and I was not able to find where Mrs. Edward J. Kemp got this uh, piece of art. Now, um, the specific uh, piece is number 73.83.10, as there are multiple different types of bark cloth within Eskenazi's museum, but only one that I found is displayed. There are like 13 different bark cloth, but not all of them are displayed due to protecting them from the prolonged exposure of light, which is what Eskenazi Museum of Art tends to do with a lot of pieces where they interchange them and like depending on how long they've been out, depending on when they need to get back. Um, you are able, uh, within the museum, you can take pictures of the art, just do not have your flash shot on as that has more light exposure, unfortunately. As I said before, this specific piece uh, of Siapo is from between 1930 to 1950, but this tradition and technique has been around for thousands of years. Uh, between the different uh, islands of Polynesia, uh, there are similar techniques, but different patterns and uh, designs reflecting the different islands and their history and their traditions. Uh, CFO can be used as clothing, uh, womb dividers, uh, cultural, can be used for cultural events, masks and bells and other sorts of uses. Now, um, during weddings, um, and other big events, uh, huge lengths of bark cloth are gifted and can be passed down through generations, and the knowledge of this is also passed down. Now, I will be explaining on how you make Siapo, but I have never made it. I have never had the opportunity or been in the area uh, that does make Siapo, but I've only done my research. I have not had first time experience, and I, I, I'll have other lengths of the process that you can make. I have there's videos, pictures that I'll have linked in the in the credits as I do not have permission to share the pictures and do not want to take any um credit for any of the pictures. Thank you. Now Siapo is made from young paper mulberry trees. They are about 10 to 14 months old or like one to two inches in diameter. Uh, they are cut down and uh, and stripped of the branches and then the bark is stripped from the tree using a sharp knife or your teeth and once you remove the bark from the tree then you have to move the bast from the bark and the bast is the type of fiber that you turn into siapo through a long intensive process that can take many days weeks depending on how much you are doing in the process and intric and the and the more details that you have on the Seattle. 
Now the bast is soaked in water to keep it more malleable, and there are three shells that are used to um, take out the leftover bark and other green growth and other impurities within the bast. Now it also softens and spreads and takes out the excess water within the um, the bast. Now um, there are three different types of shells due to the different types of coarseness. Um, from most coarse to less coarse, there is uh, BP, uh, by and Asi. Uh, the bast is scraped on a, there is a board that the bast is on where you scrape it. And the board itself is kind of curved. Sometimes there's like ridges on it. And that is to strengthen the board to, uh, to keep the board strong to, from all the continuous and long amounts of time scraping it. After all the um, stage of the uh, shells, you um, go to beat it with a, uh, to help flatten it more with a wooden mallet called an IP on a wooden anvil called a uh, tua. Uh, this helps to make it bigger, make it thinner, helps uh, make just string stretches it out more. Now, after all this process, then you lay it out to dry. Uh, you will set stones on top to keep it flat, and you can set it outside to help the sun dry it faster. After the siapo is completely dry, it goes through a paint painting part process where three main types of colors are used, which is black, yellow, and brown, which is made from the natural plants within the area of Samoa. Now, um, there are different ways to paint sapio, uh, which can go from hand painting or using a pattern board called a yupeti, uh, which creates a siapo lei. Now, these boards were originally made from coconut fiber or fala, but after the introduction of metal tools, opeti boards were made out of wood, also known as opeti lao. Uh, with hand painted siapo, are referred to as siapo mamanu. Siapo has been primarily made by women in Samoa, but slowly more men are participating in this technique, which help also helps by the tradition of making siapo in general. Now, I more modern addition to Siapo is the introduction of other dyes and colors into the fabric uh, by Colone Fai Avia Alioso, and she was inspired by the multicolored glass, like the stained glass within the church. And this certain style is called the Leone style, as she is from the Leone group and uh, Samoa. Siapo is still made today, but to a much less uh, degree than it was before. It has rapidly declined since the introduction of cotton cloths and other factors such as changing lifestyles and the loss of mulberry trees in general. Now, there are also other areas of the world that put, uh, makes uh, bark cloths, such as Africa, Indonesia, Japan, and Jamaica. Now, uh, depending on the area, depending on what the bark cloth is used for, but there are similarities between all of them, such as uh, types of clothing, such as masks or formal wear or for feasts, or important life events that tends to um, gravitate across all of them. Since semi-recently, about like the 1900s, there have been something called the modern cotton bark cloth, which is a cotton fabric with a soft, thick, and slightly textured fabric that resembles tree bark. Now, this is mainly used in like homes for like the furniture, such as drapes, or upholstery, and other furniture-related fields. Um, there, over time. Uh, this modern cotton bark cloth has slowly decreased into something more soft, but you can still find them in vintage, and there are still people who make them in other areas. So, but sometimes, depending on the source, it reference the original types of bark cloth, as that is what the name kind of correlates from. Backtracking to the museum again, and museums in general, I wouldn't have been aware of what Blackworth was or what Siapa was until I went to the museum and saw it there. Because museums allow for a place where you can have a window into history uh, of like what was made, what is still being made, because we are still making art, we still are creating stuff. Siapa is still being made, but the museums allow a, window, a little window into certain time areas where what the progress and the process of the creating is different because over time uh, stuff is being created to make creating stuff in general easier and but sometimes uh, certain things like traditional type of ways of creating stuff are still used today because 
sometimes you can't make something better than what it already was. And Siapo is a good example of it because shells are still being made. Like sure there was like more model and like metal tools being made for the wooden things, but the core feature of Siapo is still shells and still um the mulberry trees itself. And museums are a great place for us to learn more and to gather more information on pieces of history and how it is still is here today.